Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to Chicago. We're on the road one last time this regular season for a back-to-back -back with the Bulls and Bucks starting tonight here. First of three final games for the Celtics here on this road trip that they're going to be without Robert Williams for. He did not make the trip. Emi Odoka told me just a few minutes ago at shoot around as his recovery ramps up here. Rehab's going into a two-a-day process of rehab, getting back on his feet, moving from walking to running to cutting, all the different boxes, as he said last week, that he needs to check. I basically asked Ime, are they completely ruling out Rob for the first round? Begins mid-April, ends at earliest, the end of April, April 30th, the earliest that the second round can start if all the first round series get concluded. And the Celtics haven't fully ruled out Rob yet. Yeah, we haven't looked at him being here for the first round, honestly. Uh, you know, four to six time frame is what it is, and everybody kind of reacts differently to surgeries. But uh, if possible, uh, you know, we, we haven't really ruled him out, obviously, being if he's ready. But we're going in with the mindset that he won't be there for the first round. Four-week window, which was the earliest that the team said he could return, does fall on April 27th, just before the second round could feasibly begin there. So would Rob be ready for a game six, game seven of a first round series, which could be here in Chicago? It's possible, but unlikely right now is what the Celtics are looking at as Rob starts to get through all the different processes that's going to take to get him back on the court. Adrian Wojnarowski did originally report that the Celtics are optimistic it could even be on the shorter side of the four to six week window there. So something to keep an eye on. Seeding still up in the air. Celtics look like they're going to play this out. I know Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown are on the injury report as well as Al Horford with some soreness. They may not play tonight in Chicago, but they are probable. So I assume that they're going to go in this game. The Bulls are on a back-to-back -back after a loss to Milwaukee last night. Didn't look great. Nikola Vucevic, 3-19 in that game. DeMar DeRozan went off for 40 points in three quarters, but it wasn't enough as Milwaukee won going away. Zach Levine was questionable for that game with some soreness in his knee. He didn't end up playing, so I assume that on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, we may not see him here either. They're a game back of the five seed. Currently seated, seated in number six. They did clinch with a Cleveland loss, the number six seed at worst. So if the Celtics fall into number three, they're currently in a tie with Milwaukee and Philadelphia for second. This could end up being the first round series of the Celtics see Toronto, winners of 7 of 10, another good one over the Hawks last night. They're up to 5. Feels more and more likely like a 4-5 will feature Toronto in some form or fashion here. Uh, Celtics are in a great tie-breaking position if they want to go for that number 2 seed. Miami's essentially wrapped up number 1 at this point. So 2 is probably the most that the Bucks, Celtics, and 76ers can shoot for. Of course, Celtics got the Bulls, Bucks, and Grizzlies with their destiny to number two. So if they win out, they're the number two seed in the East here. Bucks, same deal. If they win out, beat the Celtics on Thursday, they'll be the number two seed in the East. I believe they also have trips to Cleveland and Detroit to wrap up this season. Celtics had the Memphis on Sunday, who will probably rest their starters, I'd assume, in that game without anything to play for. They're number two in the West now. And when you're looking at the Philadelphia side, they have a tough trip to Toronto to start off this final stretch, but then Indiana and Detroit home games to wrap up their schedule. Uh, Celtics will likely have the tiebreak over Philadelphia. Bucks still much to be determined there. Win does clinch it on Thursday, so a lot to play for tomorrow for the Celtics on a back end of a back-to-back. -back. So it's all going to be interesting to see who plays, who's available. Are teams angling for matchups at this point? In the bottom half of the East, Cleveland's hanging on by a thread, one and a half games at seven. You've got the Nets back up to number eight after a big win yesterday against Houston. And the Hornets and Hawks are now, again, in the bottom half of that playing tournament there. So very little determined with very little time left to play here in the regular season. Celtics still trying to create some chemistry between Daniel Tice, Al Horford, Grant Williams, and the rest of the defensive unit here down the stretch of the season. They've struggled a little bit on that end here. That's what you want to watch for tonight. Bulls can obviously cut you up with some offense, even undermanned as they'll likely be here. And we'll have it all here. CLNS Media, Celtics All Access, Bobby Manning. We'll see you tonight from United Center.